The International Criminal Court is now seeking to issue an arrest warrant for Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, for crimes against humanity. Also, we're going to get into a full update on Israel's war in Gaza and Egyptian troops open fire on Israel. I'm Ben, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome back to the Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Thank you so much for joining us once again here at the Israel Guys here on YouTube. It is Memorial Day today, and so before we start, I'd like to take a second to issue my gratitude for all the men and women that have come before us and have given their lives for this great nation, this great nation of the United States of America. It's the reason we are free today as Americans, free for me to, to sit here and give my opinion to the American government. Um, is It was bought with their sacrifice, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I found this quote from Douglas MacArthur that I thought was really powerful. He said, no man is entitled to the freedom, to the blessings of freedom, unless he be vigilant in its preservation. It's one of the reasons why we do what we do here at the Israel Guys, because supporting Israel is not only important for Christians theologically, it's also important for our nation, because there's a blessing that comes with supporting Israel, and there's a curse that comes with turning our back on Israel. We cannot allow, we cannot stand by on our watch and allow our government to turn on the nation of Israel, even for our own sakes, because it would mean bringing about a curse here on the United States and the sacrifice of all those who've gone before us, who've given our, their lives and their blood for this land in a way would be nullifying that sacrifice. And so in their honor for all the people that have gone before and sacrificed for our nation, we continue to do what we do to stand with the nation of Israel. Guys, our summit that happened this last week was a tremendous success, thank God. God came through in so many different ways. We had oh, almost 700 people from all over America gather in Nashville, Tennessee. At the Ramsey Center, we had another almost 700 people on the live stream. We had tremendous, tremendous speakers, politicians from here in the United States, from Israel, powerhouse speakers. It was a, it was a, a fantastic event. It, it could not have gone better. Uh, we gave a very, very loud and encouraging message to the state of Israel that we are standing with them in these difficult times. Over this week, we're hoping to release segments from the event, a couple a couple teaser segments for you to enjoy if you were not on the live stream or there in person. And we're working on a plan to get you the whole thing. We filmed the whole thing, so we have it, and we want to get it to you. But that's going to take some time to figure out how to do the best way to do that. So I appreciate your patience, but stay tuned. We have a lot of really exciting con content coming your way to that effect. So the International Criminal Court this week, the ICC, issued arrest warrants for Bibi Netanyahu and Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant. They also issued arrest warrants for senior leadership inside of Hamas. This is effectively putting Israel's senior leadership on par with Hamas's senior leadership, and both of them are being held up for crimes against humanity. This is from the New York Times. They said the court's prosecutor, Karim Khan, uh, said in a statement that he was applying for arrest warrants for senior Hamas leadership uh, because he had reasonable, reasonable grounds to believe they were responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Go figure. Doesn't take a brilliant person to figure that out. He, he goes on to say that he had re also requested arrest warrants for Mr. Nanyo and Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, because there are reasonable grounds to believe that they bore responsibility for war crimes and crimes against humanity, including the starvation of civilians as a weapon of weapon of war and intentionally directing attacks against the civilian population. Need I say that this is insane? To put Benjamin Netanyahu and senior leaders in Hamas on equal footing on the world stage and to issue arrest warrants or to apply to issue arrest warrants for both of them in the International Criminal Court, I don't like throwing the term anti-Semitism around all the time. I feel like it's overused, and in the overusing of it, it loses its effectiveness. Because when you when you cry wolf too much, people actually won't listen when the real wolf is coming. But this is anti-Semitism. There's no other way to look at that. This is flat out anti-Semitism on the world stage because is the world is treating Israel as a nation like they would treat no other nation. No other nation in the world gets treated like this. Israel was attacked on October 7th by Hamas. 
They were attacked before that, and before that, and before that, and before that, over and over and over again. Hamas lobs missiles into Israel's population centers. I don't know how many times we have to say this. But in that, in that attacking, Israel has no right in the international community to respond. Any other sovereign nation in the world would not put up with this for as long as Israel has. Can you imagine if the United States were attacked with Mexico lobbed missiles over the United States border towards Washington, D.C.? And then they did it again and then again and again and again. How long would the United States sit by and allow Mexico City to survive? How long would we? And then if the United States responded and decided to take out Mexico's uh, military capability, no, nothing against Mexicans, it's just, just strictly a border thing, us and Mexico, Israel and Hamas, if we responded, would the International Criminal Court take the United States to task and issue, issue arrest warrants for Joe Biden issue and, and senior leadership in, here inside of the United States? Would they do that? Absolutely not, because the is, United States is not Israel and the United States is not run by Jewish people. Israel is run by Jews and the world has a serious beef with Jews, especially Jews that defend themselves in their own sovereign nation. I don't know, know any other way to put it. This is anti-Semitism on the highest scale. And we're seeing it unfold in world events as we speak. We're seeing it unfold right now. Not only this, that just happened in the International Criminal Court, but the ICJ, the court and the judicial arm inside of the UN, also made a ruling this week, 13 to 2. 15, 15 nations voting here, 13 to 2. That Israel must immediately halt its military offensive and any other action in the Rafah government, which may inflict on the, Palestinian, on the Palestinian group in Gaza conditions of life that would bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. Scholars are trying to turn it, to, you know, to interpret exactly what this means. But in effect, it, on its face, it seems like the court is issue, is giving telling Israel they have to stop operations inside of Rafah, whether completely or partially. Again flat out anti-Semitism, 13 to two. This wasn't even a divided vote. This was a nearly unanimous vote by world nations telling Israel that they cannot destroy the evil that is attempting to destroy them. The world hates strong Jews defending themselves inside of the nation of Israel. That's the only way to, to explain it. The world is very, very quickly turning anti-Semitic in many ways, world nations, leaders in that effect. And this scares me. It really scares me in a lot of different ways. I know it's difficult to look at prophecies in scripture about every nation turning on Israel, turning on the nation of Israel, coming against Jerusalem and wonder how on earth could that ever happen? Guys, it's playing out right in front of our eyes right now. It is a crazy time. This is a crazy, crazy time to be alive. Thankfully, Israel is vowing that they will not stop inside of Rafa. They will not heed the, um, the ICJ or not, not completely, or interpret it in the best way that they know how to continue operations inside of Rafah. So Israel is continuing those operations. We're going to get into a full update, also a crazy breaking news story with Egypt here in just a second. But first, have you ever longed to connect with the divine language of the Psalms to understand and speak the words as King David did? The Israel Bible, Book of Psalms, Pray Like David edition opens the door to Psalms like never before, making David's powerful words accessible to us all, even if you don't know Hebrew. This unique edition brings an innovative approach to exploring the Psalms, offering a verse-by-verse -verse transliteration alongside the traditional Hebrew text and English translation. This means that every sacred word, every verse of King David's timeless prayers is now at your fingertips, waiting to be discovered, understood, and voiced in their original language. But why transliteration? Because it breaks down barriers if it allows you to pray in Hebrew even if you've never spoken a word of it before. This edition is not just about reading, it's about experiencing, about bringing the Psalms into your daily life in a way that's never been possible before. Whether you seek solace, guidance, or a deeper connection to your faith, the Psalms offer a path forward. The Pray Like David edition ensures this path is open to everyone 
take the first step on this journey, click the link below and let the Psalms be your guide, your comfort, and your inspiration. So we're going to get into a bit of an update uh, about Israel's operations in Rafah and Gaza in general. Uh, but first, we have a breaking news story that just surfaced. We don't have a lot of details on, uh, but apparently Egyptian and Israeli soldiers got in a firefight just a few hours ago. Uh, according to the IDF, Egyptian forces opened fire on Israeli positions near the border. Uh, and Israeli soldiers initially fired in the air, trying not to engage. Obviously, not good for Israel and uh, for IDF and Egyptian forces to get into a firefight um, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but ended up, they ended up committing and killing at least one Egyptian. The Egyptian military has confirmed, I believe, as far as I could tell, that uh, one Egyptian soldier at least was killed. And uh, there's rumors circulating that it may be even up to four. Uh, so this is wild. We don't know what this means exactly, if this was an isolated incident or something broader. Um, but this is a developing story, so more details will come out. This just broke, so I wanted to slip it in the show um, so we could get it out. Um, there's a lot more to Egypt, Israel, and Hamas than we realize. There's a lot coming out currently in regards to Egypt and Hamas. I won't say too much more here right now, um, but there, there will be more to this. You will be hearing more about this in the near future. We've not seen the last of Egypt in this struggle. Um, there's a lot of depth to this that hopefully will break down on a future show and we will have more details come out soon. Uh, Israel is moving forward inside of Rafah. Um, and just as a reminder, Israel must conquer Rafah in order to finish Hamas. Rafah is the last stronghold of Hamas and in his absolute labyrinth of tunnels underneath. Uh, tunnels everywhere, including huge tunnels that Israel's uncovered in between Gaza and Egypt. Little hint there as to some other things that may be going on. Huge tunnels in between Gaza and Egypt. Um, but Hamas continues to shoot rockets at Israel. Just this week, we saw a huge barrage of rockets come out of Rafah again into central Israel for the first time in a long time, um, which underscores the importance of what Israel must do inside of Rafah to close these off once and for all, to close these tunnels, these rocket launchers, and Hamas capability in general off inside of Rafah. Uh, Israel has been moving forward. Um, and, and taking out tunnels one at a time. We have this video here just published of 800 meters of tunnels being blown up at the same time. It's pretty awe-inspiring to see this take place from the air. When Hamas fired rockets into central Israel just the other day, um, they fired a barrage from a rocket launcher as Israeli troops were approaching on that launcher. The IDF said it was just actually took place just 800 meters from where their troops were, and the launcher was between a school and a mosque. And so as the troops were coming, basically Hamas fired off everything they had and then ran. So they kind of they kind of emptied their launchers and ran. The reason why Hamas continues to fire even out, out of sites that the IDF technically has a lot of control over is because they put these inside of schools, inside of mosques, inside of kindergartens. And also, a lot of these launchers are really small and easy to disguise. The IDF just released this video this week of a launcher that they found, I believe, near the Egyptian border. Um, that's basically, it's like a, a, like a porta potty on one side. And on the other side, it's a rocket launcher. You can see in this video here how, like, from one side, it looks like a portable bathroom, and the other side is basically just like a metal box where the launcher is fired out of. That's why it's so difficult to catch this before it happens. Hamas can fire off their arsenal, run. By the time the IDF gets in or, or drops a bomb there, they're gone. Um, this is why Israel must clear out Gaza entirely. The entire thing has to be completely cleared out. They can't stop and leave some of this to chance because, as we've seen before, Hamas will not back down. They will not stop. They will continue to fire rockets to Israel for as long as they have the capability to do it. In that rocket barrage, there were a couple of Israelis injured um, in the hospital, so we need to continue to offer up prayers for um, those the IDF is clearing streets inside of Rafah one by one, continuing to um, to operate. Also in northern Gaza as well, Israel's continuing to maintain security and to send in special forces units where needed to take out you know, Hamas as they pop out of tunnels and as different operations happen. There's activity all over Gaza. Israel, for as much as the world is yelling at Israel for 
operating inside of Rafah uh, because of civilian casualties. Israel, in the first 10 days or so after they began the operation, evacuated uh, over a million civilians outside out of Rafah into a secure area. Um, they, it was a tremendous operation, not easy to do at all and costly to Israel because when you evacuate that many civilians, as we saw you know, after World War II, when the US, U.S. and other allied troops were moving civilian refugees um, inside of Europe, you know, that's when a lot of the Nazis escaped to Argentina and other countries as well as they just put on civilian clothes and just filtered out. Um, some of the biggest names in Nazi Germany escaped that way. That's also how, I mean, presumably a lot of Hamas is going to escape as well, so filter out with civilians. Israel is taking that risk because they care about civilian life, even though they don't technically have to because this is war. This is open warfare. They could have, you know, contained the civilians there and done the operation anyway, but they've evacuated over a million civilians from Rafah. You don't hear any world leaders um, uh, praising Israel for that. That kind of just gets swept under the rug and they move on to the next tune that they want to pipe. Um, Israel's targeting senior Hamas and leaders as soon as they find them in Rafah and other areas of Gaza as well. They just killed the West Bank division head in a targeted strike inside of Gaza. This is continuing, continuing every single day. Continue to pray for Israel's soldiers as they pursue this war on terror inside of Gaza. Continue to pray for civilians inside of Israel to be protected from rockets and also all the threats of north happening with Hezbollah. For wisdom for Israel to be able to stand alone when all the nations of the world come against them in horrific ways and to have wisdom as they pursue the next steps up north as Israel gets ready to switch gears and deal with Hezbollah because a terrible threat of North that Israel must, must deal with. That's it for the show today, guys. Don't forget to check out Israel 365's Israel Bible Book of Psalms. Don't forget to subscribe and get the conversation going down below. Love interacting with you in the comments down below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We'll be back nearly every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Israel.